All right, guys, we are excited to catch up with this next guest main eventing on an upcoming UFC fight night against Calvin Gaslam on August 21st, 22nd in Australia and New Zealand. It's been a minute since we've had a chance to hear from him. Jared Cannon here. Welcome back to Submission Radio, man. It's great to have you back on the show. I uh, appreciate you guys having me. Always a pleasure, Matt. Always. I was saying to you before, we, we've been wanting you on for ages, so I'm glad we could tee this up. And you mentioned just now that your phone's on low battery, so this is going to be a very exciting interview. This is like a Mission Impossible <laughs> movie. We'll see how we go, but I know you've got a charger nearby, so everyone can rest assured. Um, now, here's the thing, man. You don't really use social media a whole lot, so we haven't had a chance to really see what's been going on since your fight with Robert Whitaker. What's been happening, man? What's been happening in your life? Well, as you all know, Robert Whitaker broke my arm in a fight, so I've been on the uh, road to recovery since then. Um, it's been a bumpy road at that, because uh, the first procedure was unsuccessful. It was declared a non-union, which means the bone didn't heal back together properly. So they had to go back in, take the hardware out, do some medical magic, and uh, put another uh, rod in back in February. So um, two surgeries later, and I am uh, two weeks away from being cleared to to compete again. But I'm back in the gym. I'm back training. I'm hitting pet. I'm hitting mitts. I'm hitting people. Um, <laughs> I'm back to work. So I'm back in my happy place. Man, it's, it's good to see that you're obviously hitting people again. That's the main thing. But how tough has that been? I mean, we obviously had the massive uh, chest injury. I believe it was a pec tear not that long ago. You made a big road to recovery from that. And now with this arm, I mean, you, normally you hear about a broken arm and, and you think, okay, relatively simple procedure, right? So for it to not work out, how, how tough was that for you, man? Uh, it was definitely frustrating. It wasn't... Um, but I wouldn't say it was, like, hard to deal with. Um, it was just another phenomenon, if you can, if I can say that. But, um, you know, I trust my doctors. I trust my physical therapist. Um, they found that it was actually uh, that I had staph in the bone. So Whoa. they had to go in there and, and clean, it, clean it out and put me on antibiotics. So um, better, uh, you know, I'm glad we caught it. When we caught it, then, you know, when it could have done some real damage. So, um... I'm back now. I'm putting all that crap behind me. I'm not really dwelling on. I don't. To be honest, I didn't really dwell dwell on the negative aspect of not being, of this whole thing happening. So, um, again, it was just one of those things. So, but I wasn't tripping. And again, I'm back and I'm ready to have some fun. Dude, you know, the crazy thing is uh, when you look back at that Robert Whitaker fight, that arm break that you suffered happened in the first round. So, when you kind of think back to it, are you? Proud of the fact that you were able to keep fighting with such a crazy injury? I mean, most people would, you know, that, that would be it. That would be it right there. But you went all the way through to the end of the fight. Well, I wouldn't, couldn't just let the man win, right? They had to make it work <laughs> for it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I can take some uh, points, uh, you know, take some points off of that. I've gotten props from, from a few of the fans on, on the, uh, the internet thing. And, uh, <laughs> the internet thing. Yeah. And, you know, it is, you know, uh, you know, if I was on the outside looking in, I would commend the person for being able to sustain a traumatic injury, one that would that takes away one of your weapons, you know, so early in the fight and be able to uh you know, continue to fight, you know, try to try to fight best as best as, as uh, one one could. So um you know, I don't it's it's cool, you know, but I can't sit here and be like, oh, what a good boy am I? You know, I did this and look what I did. You know, what I want is the title. I want to win the belt. I want to fight. I want to, uh, and I want to win. So I didn't win that fight, you know. Uh, that stings, you know, uh, regardless of how the fight went. And any of the cool points that I can take away from it, you know, I still lost that fight. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm trying to get trying to get back to that win. Yeah, and just to take us quickly into that, I mean, I know you would have been, you would have had the adrenaline going through your body. We know, you know, you're, you're tough as nails, but when did that pain really kick in for you with that arm? Was it instantaneous? Were you like, ah, crap, here we go? Or did it wear off a couple of rounds in, and that third round you were like, ah, damn, here we go? Or was it was it something that it really kicked in after the fight? I wouldn't say I experienced pain um, once, you know, once I once the kick landed, I knew that I had did something wrong by just simply by the way I broke, I blocked the kick. 
I know you can break your arm by blocking the kick like that. And uh, and by the way, it felt. And it, right after the kick landed, I opened and closed my fist, and I felt the ball moving around. So I knew, I knew something was wrong with it. Um, and I mean, what more can you do? I can't really, you know, start licking my wounds right there in the middle of a fight. So um, you don't, you know, you don't think about it. You know, uh, that's what warriors do, I guess. Um, they t- they get wounded in battle, and they if they can keep going, they keep going. So I can keep going. I, I was coherent. I was able to. Uh, I had one other arm and two other legs to use. Um, and, you know, it was a learning experience. I was able to, uh, for me, I t- from it, I took that I was able, I should be able to use my uh, my tools more, vers- you know, in a more versatile manner, you know, be, be able to do more with my with my weapons. So that's a learning experience at the same time. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think you also found out just how tough you are, so no one can ever take that away from you. And I know that, obviously, with you wanting to sort of move on and just get back in there, you know, here we thought you were going to be facing Paulo Costa, which on paper was a fantastic fight. But then we obviously saw that, you know, he's, he's you know, not in the fight, saying that he, you know, never signed a contract. What was your reaction when you saw, okay, I'm not fighting Paulo Costa? Well, first of all, I already knew how tough I was. I didn't need to get my arm broke and then go <laughs> three, you know, three whole rounds to find out how tough I am. <laughs> uh, so I already know the answer to that question. And, and secondly, uh, I didn't really, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to trip on it. You know, something outside of my power. If the man wants to fight, he'll fight. If he doesn't want to fight, um, we see how that, how this is, you know, going for him. So um, I'm just happy that I have an opponent. I'm happy Kelvin stepped up. And um, I get to get in there and fight, man. After all this, the pec tear at the beginning of 2020, and then the arm break at the middle end of 2020, and then the not healing at the beginning of 2021. You know, it, it, these this 2020 uh, uh, decade isn't isn't starting out too well for me. So I'm assuming <laughs> this is is gonna we're only gonna go up from there. So yeah, I'm ready. It- it can only get better. I have to. I know you're not tripping about Paulo. It seems like you're not too phased on the opponent. But I have to get your take on his his reasons for you know basically. I don't know if you can call it withdrawing from the fight, but essentially he wants to get paid more. He wants more money, and that's why you guys aren't fighting. I'm wondering what your take is on that. Well, I don't know how much he's getting paid per fight, but uh, you know it's a common it's a common argument, right? MMA fighters, UFC fighters, MMA in general fighters uh, don't get paid as much in comparison to what the organizations of the promotions are getting paid. So, um, yeah, I mean, I understand the argument. Um, I can't, you know, hate on him or knock him or chastise him for, for having his stance. You know, it's a very bold stance to say, I'm not going to fight unless you guys pay me some more money, you know? Um, but, um, so yeah, man, somebody has got to fight for us fighters to get paid more. And, I'm not going to turn down a, a, a fatter paycheck either. <laughs> so, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's his choice. Um, you know, with that being said, he has to be able to deal with the uh, consequences of that, not fighting and maybe even losing his position. You know, he's ranked number two right there. He just fought for the title, so he's right there. He can get right back in it with a few wins, you know. Mm. Uh, but... And once you get a title fight, that's when you start getting pay-per-view points. That's when I hear the money starts rolling in. So <laughs> I don't wouldn't know. I don't, I would, you know, I'm not there yet. Yeah. So it's cool to kind of see that a part of you kind of respects what he's standing up for. Absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, he's, he's fighting for something that I would fight for my, you know, he's fighting for me, you know? So, uh, that's just like me talking down on, uh, our, you know, our soldiers who would, you know, fight somebody, a, a terrorist coming here or or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. You guys understand where I'm going with this. I can come up with a whole bunch of uh, comparisons, but you guys get it. Yeah. See you later, so, guys. So Peace. when it comes to, all right, Polo Costa's out of the fight and you're looking for a replacement opponent, I'm wondering what names came across your desk? Was it just Kelvin Gaslam? I know you were supposed to fight Darren Till at one point. Were you kind of hoping that maybe he'd be the guy Rather than fighting Derek Brunson, he he maybe would fight you. What what was the process like? Well, at the time, you know, I was aware that all of the top guys were booked up for fights, so it was it was Slim Pinkins out there. Um, 
ironically or coincidentally, Kelvin's was one of the names that popped up in my head. He's one of the top 10. He's challenged for the interim title before. He's fought a lot of the top guys, so he has a big name behind him, as well as uh, uh, the skills to back it up. So um, he was one of the names that uh, they came up on the board because, you know, like, again, everybody else is booked up. His was, um, Uriah Hall's name was, uh, Brunson, of course, Till, but those two are booked up. And I found out that Uriah Hall is booked up as well. So uh, Mm. anybody, you know, anybody who is the most toppest, rankestest person available. Well, you got a good one in Calvin. I mean, I feel like Calvin's a pretty underrated guy. Certainly tough. I mean, the the way he he you know took all the the damage in the Robert Whitaker fight was just insane. The guy's chin is crazy. What do you make of him? Uh, I guess as a challenge for you. I guess you were pretty happy when you got him. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, I don't want to sit here and wax poetically about how awesome he is. <laughs> or how awesome he isn't, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I, I see, I, I know, uh, what I know is that uh, Kelvin is, what we all know is that he's got a good wrestling base. He's got knockout power in his hands. He's not afraid to mix it up with bigger guys, you know what I'm saying? He's come, he's, he has, he's been in, what, the middleweight division since he had come up from the welterweight division. So uh, he's not necessarily, oops, sorry. Oh, good. He's not necessarily a big middleweight. But he's been in there mixing up with the top middleweight. So, um, you know, he's got the heart of a Mexican warrior, if you will, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and a big ass head to go along with it. So, <laughs> the trash I'm talk excited. starts now. The trash talk is kicking off. <laughs> I mean, if you want to call it that, you know, uh, there's no insult or anything. It's like Lane Bennis, he's got the big head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like big targets, right? It's a big target. Hey, so, was... uh, sorry, go, go ahead. No, go on, Jared. Sorry. I was going to continue waxing poetically, but you can go ahead. <laughs> well, Casper brought it up. I mean, Calvin is super tough, but for you, uh, an incentive in this fight, would it be to get a finish over him? He's not someone that, you know, Israel Adesanya had a very close fight with him. Robert Whitaker beat him, but he wasn't able to finish him. Would, would he be a guy that you would like to set a statement against for the rest of the division? Um, To... For the intent wouldn't be to make a statement. The intent is only to win and win as uh as easily as make it look as easily as possible. So if we go out there, touch gloves, he throws, misses, I swing and hit, and he falls to the ground, the ref calls a fight. That's what that's what I'm talking about right there. So um whatever statement the world or the crowd or the other fighters or whoever wants wants to take from that, you know, be my guest. But uh my intent is to go out there and whoop who's ever their ass is in front of me. I think if it played out that way, that'd be a pretty massive yeah. statement. <laughs> S- sounds like a, a, a 10 second finish. But I was going to say, um, with Kelvin, you mentioned the wrestling. Do you think he goes for the wrestling much and, and tries to, you know, use that, I wouldn't say advantage, but tries to take the fight, you know, in a way where maybe it's a little bit safer? Or do you think he comes out and just trades with you like he, he's been pretty content with uh, to do with, you know, the, the best strikers in the division? Well, um... Going off of what he said in his last fight and what he's shown in his last fight, he wanted to employ more, more wrestling into his uh, into his game. And he showed that in, in his attempts to take Robert down in, in that fight. So um, with that being said, man, uh, I feel like I have the superior striker. I'm the, I'm the superior striker um, based off of the effectiveness of my striker. Not to say that I got a thousand moves in my, in my repertoire and I can flip off the wall and punch you, uh, you know, and then make you whatever. But um, I feel like that I'm going to have the more imposing striking, um, the more dangerous striking. So uh, there's not much to say for me <laughs> except for that. I forgot the question. What was the question again? Just, oh, I think you answered it. Just basically if he's going to try and stand with you oh. or if he's going to try and wrestle. Yeah. I think you summed it up well. So, so yeah, generally, you know, you get back into a wall, what are you going to do? You're going to try to find the easiest way, right, way out. Um, on paper, that would be the path of least resistance to wrestle me. Um, but, you know, I'm getting better at, sh- at stuff and shots, and I'm, I'm good at taking people down as well. You know, you may even see me take him down. Mm-hmm. Um, you just might see me take him down. 
you know, because I'm, impl- I'm implementing, implementing it into my game as well. I need to be able to wrestle a guy if I need to wrestle a guy. And uh, I already know I can knock a person out with, if I'm on top, if I'm, yeah, if I'm on top and they're on the ground. And uh, I've shown that I'm able to get up with the guy who's, uh, with these people who've been able to take me down. So it's getting to the point where you're not able to take me down. And, um, and if you do attempt to take me down, it'll turn, you know, I'll quickly turn it around, you know, turn it, turn it against you. You know, you're going to spend a lot of energy trying to get me down. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is, you know, uh, but it's a fight, you know, uh, the, the smarter, the stronger, faster, but more importantly, the smarter fighter generally is the one who's going to win. So I want to be smart uh, as always. Um, I want to be stronger. I want to be faster. I want to be everything. I want to be better. Um, than my opponent, but also want to be a better version of myself as always. So I'm ready to, uh, to make that happen. Yeah, hundred percent. And speaking of being the best version of yourself, uh, there is no better way to do that than with Manscaped's Lawn Mower 3.0. If you're still shaving your balls with an old rusty razor, throw that shit on the wall, watch it explode, and then reach out and take the Lawn Mower 3.0 and feel the difference with its skin safe technology, the 7,000 RPMs of power, the LED light, the waterproof feature. It'll be the best ball shave you've ever experienced in your life life i like to do it in the shower because it's waterproof nice easy saves time and you can use it on anything maybe you got some back hair maybe you got some hair i don't know on the ears we're getting old we're getting that you know ear hair that's like you know three feet long <laughs> shave it away look the best version of yourself and you can do it with 20 percent off save money with the code submission and who doesn't like saving money you do that's who get the manscaped lawnmower three point the official sponsor of submission radio isn't that right Dennis? that's right Cass. we're presented by manscape and you know while you getting that code you get that free shipping as well which absolutely drives me nuts during these lockdowns and COVID situations where you spend more money on uh, shipping than you do on the actual product and Manscaped do it right Uh, they support so many other brands in MMA and they've been an absolute pleasure to work with so someone that you can trust go shave your balls today and after you're done shaving your balls what about making some money because with my book you guys have a crazy opportunity to sign up with promo code submission and my bookie will match your deposit halfway up to one thousand dollars visit my bookie online today you can bet on all sorts of different things of course you got the israel adesanya versus vittori rematch you've got that big fight between leon edwards and of course nate diaz what about brad riddell versus drew dober all the nba playoffs that are just going all over the place so much money to be made go to my bookie today use the promo code submission Bet, win, get paid only at my bookie. But Jared, you know, whenever we speak to you, I always think about the fact that you're such a genuine guy. And w- one of the things about you that I think is different from a lot of the fighters in the UFC is, you know, we don't really see much about you on social media. Like, it doesn't look like social media is something that's a priority to you. And almost like you don't really enjoy doing it. I'm, I'm just curious, man, before we get your thoughts on UFC 263 this weekend, um, why is that? Break it down for us a little bit. What What is your sort of um, mentality around social media and also the impact that it has on the fight game today? Um, I'm pretty private with my life. Um, on top of that, I'm always going I'm always going through changes. So. Um, so I don't want to be all up on social media saying one thing one day and then you'd be like, you know, I have a change of heart and then, you know have to go back behind myself and change what I said, you know, because the words that I say affect people because, you know, it's a bunch of people listening to me, apparently. So, um, but other than that, you know, I'm just, I'm not very uh, public with my life, you know. I'm not the type to, uh, you know, put my makeup on and do my hair and get all dressed (laughs) up real nice, like to go out in front of a bunch of people who I can give two shits about, who don't really know me, who I don't know, who aren't going to pay my bills, who ain't pretty much doing nothing for me. Um, I see no need in trying to uh, create content or appease or entertain. I'm not an entertainer. You know, uh, I'm not here to make anybody laugh or cry. At the very least, I want to make you think. But um, social media, man, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
it's a crazy world. It's like a whole new world, you know? Mm. So um, when I'm ready to step into the social media world, I will. And I'm going to have all my, my ducks in a row. I'm going to have my shit together. And the shit that I the shit that I want the stuff that I want to say is going to uh, reverberate throughout the uh, Ethernet, if you will. <laughs> mm. Well, I know that you spoken to us before about how important the art is of mixed martial arts, and that's kind of I guess how you express yourself. You don't express yourself on social media; you do it in the cage. So I think that's very refreshing as yeah. well. Um, before we let you go, Jared, obviously we've got to get your thoughts on this weekend UFC 263 Israel Adesanya versus Marvin Vittori the rematch. Um, important fight obviously for the division how do you see that one playing out man um you know i see uh it's hard to see how that you know it's hard to say how a fight will go but a few things that i can foresee happening is of course izzy having a uh a, 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 you know another fun day in the office running his striking game making guys miss swing and miss or stuffing takedowns and you know doing what he does you know uh even better this time, hopefully, you know. Uh, or we see Vittori come out there like the dog he is, get all up in Izzy's grill, you know, uh, catch him on his heels, maybe uh, get him off his feet and uh, get him on the ground. And, and you know, we may have a first Italian uh, uh, champion in the UFC. But um, one thing I do know is going to be a good fight. Um, I am uh, very interested in fight watching this fight. I'll be there. I don't know if I'll be front row, but I'll be there. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be uh, one as a fan, but also two as a competitor. You know, uh, I'm sure uh, whoever wins or loses this fight will be uh, right there within the in my crosshairs or or me in theirs. What does that do for you, being there in person yeah. and watching the fight live as opposed to just watching it through the TV screen? Um, what does that do for you? And are you hoping that you run into one of the guys either before or after the fight, you know, maybe chat to them, get a get a gauge on them in any way? Yeah. Uh, you know, being there, you know, it's fun, entertaining, going out to an event and seeing, you know, being out there in the crowd, you know, it's, it's, it's not my first time going to one, uh, as, of course, as you guys know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, it's fun. You know, the UFC puts on really fun shows. Um, and, of course, the fighters always come to put, uh, to fight. On top of that, for me, for in a, as far as the metaphysical stances, it helps me as far as my ability being able to project myself and learn from the experiences that I'm witnessing with my eyes. So, um, you know, I watch a lot of fights on TV, and I'm able to, exp- you know, to, to a certain degree, experience what they're experiencing without going through it myself. But being there in person, really seeing it and uh, being right there in that field, of the inner energetic field, if you will, it's uh, I think it lends itself to be, me being able to do that a little bit more. You know, I drown out, I too drown out the whole crowd. I don't hear anybody, all the screaming and shit going on around you. I don't hear any of that. I'm in, I'm in, in there watching the fight. It sucks having to watch it through the, uh, the cage and stuff and, mm. you know. Cause you don't get the good look the whole time like you would all, all, um, from the TV screen, but nonetheless, you know I benefit from it. Well, I'll tell you what, Jared, we're excited for the big return, you versus Kelvin Gaslam, and of course we spoke about it. There's not many updates, but when there are, they matter. So follow the man at Killer Gorilla MMA on Instagram and Twitter, dude. It's just so happy to see you back in there and healed up. Can't wait to see you back in the octagon. Thank you, guys. Another. Wonderful interview. I appreciate the... Uh, you guys do ask some good questions, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> love it, dude. Never be a stranger, man. We love chatting with you, man. Hopefully, we'll do another one soon. Good luck, uh, Jared. For sure, guys. Have a good weekend.